This is your idea of a nightmare. Keep watching. It's rare for ships to find themselves in serious trouble. And even rarer for the crew to be forced to abandon them. I'm ready to run in. Clear the stream. Clear the stream. In fact, the first principle of safety at sea remains as true today as ever. The ship is your best lifeboat and should not be abandoned until there is no alternative. Life rafts come in several types. Those that form part of a marine evacuation system. Those that are launched from davits on board the ship. And those that are thrown over the side. To ensure the best chance of survival in an emergency, you need to be familiar with the system used on your ship. This is particularly important if you're responsible for the safety of passengers or crew who don't know how the life rafts operate. Information about the types of survival equipment carried on your ship and detailed instructions on its use can be found in the SOLAS training manual for your vessel. This can normally be found on the bridge and in the engine control room and accommodation areas such as the mess and recreation room. Bridge, bridge, this is muster station B, muster station B, how do you copy, over. Life rafts should only be launched when an order is given by the master. At this time, I would like for you to abandon ship, abandon ship, abandon ship. Or in their absence, by another nominated senior officer. Understood, time to abandon ship. Your muster list will outline the procedure and the emergency signaling system on your vessel. It will also tell you what your duties are during an emergency. Firstly, marine evacuation systems. These are often installed on vessels that carry large numbers of passengers. And they provide a way of evacuating people quickly. When you're ready, let go, keep your arms above your head at all times. They also enable people to board the life rafts while staying in Clear! An important element in any survival situation, as hypothermia can be a major threat. These systems have an inflatable slide or chute for evacuation, with an inflatable platform for boarding life rafts at the bottom. They are designed so that a single person can deploy them. This should be done at the same time that preparation parties are launching and inflating the life rafts. These systems vary. This version has an escape chute that automatically unfolds as the life raft leaves its stowage and is inflated. These systems are often used on ferries. No one should abandon the ship until the order to do so has been given by the master or the nominated deputy. All evacuees should remove glasses and sharp objects before they descend. Only remove shoes if they might damage the chute. Otherwise, they should be kept on to conserve body heat. Okay. This one can go on here. Thank you. If you'd like to follow me, I can bring you along. The abandoned ship procedure is controlled by an evacuation team, equipped with survival suits stationed at the top and bottom of the chute. It's their job to control and regulate the flow of passengers as they go down the slide to the platform. When the evacuees reach the bottom of the chute, they should be helped up and directed to their places 
by the crew member who is in charge. The life rafts are secured to the side of the ship by bowsing lines controlled by a powered winch. If your ship has a marine evacuation system, it's particularly important that you are familiar with its operation. It's rare that a full simulation exercise can be held. So you will need to study your ship's SOLAS training manual carefully to make sure you know what is involved. If you are responsible for looking after passengers, your familiarity with the evacuation process should enable you to reassure passengers and prevent unnecessary panic. These systems are designed to evacuate a ship within 30 minutes. There will be no time for hesitation in a real emergency. Experience shows that a swift yet controlled evacuation will significantly increase everyone's chances of survival in an emergency. The noise of gas will continue after the inflation has finished. Don't be concerned. This is just excess gas being released. Once inflation is complete, the bowsing lines are used to draw the life raft to the ship's side so that it can be made fast, ready for boarding. A crew member should then enter the raft to check for leaks or defects before the evacuation gets underway. In cold weather, the inflated life raft floor will provide additional insulation. When the life raft has been inspected, the bridge is informed that the life raft is ready. When the evacuation order is received, boarding can begin. Make sure people remove anything that could puncture the raft, such as high heels and other sharp objects, such as pens and jewelry. Soft shoes and work boots are allowed and will help your feet retain heat whilst avoiding damage to the raft. The boarding process should be supervised by two crew members sitting at the entrance of the raft. They direct evacuees to the left and right in sequence so that they sit evenly around the raft balancing the load. Evacuees should always sit facing the center and never on the buoyancy chambers. With boarding completed, it's time to release the bowsing lines. Make sure they're kept within the raft so that they cannot snag as the life raft is lowered. A caught line could easily tip up or damage the survival craft. As the life raft reaches the surface of the water, the person in charge of the life raft pulls the lanyard to allow the automatic hook to release and the life raft to drift forward. The davit hook is then raised, ready for the next launch. As one life raft is being launched, the next should be undergoing preparation on deck. The last life raft is lowered from inside using the brake release cable. In addition to marine evacuation systems and Davit launched life rafts, Ships normally carry a number of throw-over life rafts. Sometimes these are mounted in racks, ready for launch. Rafts, close to the accommodation, are fitted with a hydrostatic release and a weak link, so that if the ship sinks, they float to the surface and inflate. The first to board 
is the person in charge. They then check the life raft for leaks and damage before boarding can begin. It's essential to ensure the raft is not damaged while it's alongside the ship. Evacuees must climb down a ladder to the life raft. Never jump onto the canopy, as you could land on other evacuees. You will also get wet. So, if you can board the life raft dry, it will help keep you warm and prevent hypothermia. But it's not always easy to avoid getting wet when boarding throw overboard life rafts, particularly in rough weather. If this is the case, your immersion suit will help protect you and keep you dry and warm. Sometimes, life rafts can capsize when they're launched. So you need to know how to write them. As crew, you should have received training in this during a personal survival techniques course. All life rafts are fitted with writing straps and you will need to climb onto the raft, stand on the gas cylinders and haul on the straps to turn the raft over facing the wind. With a large life raft, two people acting together will more easily be able to write it. As the raft writes, it's important to appreciate both the position of the gas cylinders and that an air pocket may exist under the raft once it is righted. The fittest, most able evacuees should undertake the job as they may need to help others to board the life raft once it is righted, using the buoyancy from the casualty's life jacket to help. Rescuers need to be careful that they don't fall into the water themselves. After launching, the first priority is to cut the painter, retaining as much length as you can, using the safety knife inside the life raft. Then get away from the ship's side. However, maneuvering a life raft is not easy as it tends to get blown by the wind. It may be possible to paddle the raft or to use a sea anchor to maneuver the raft by throwing it out and hauling the raft towards it. On some ships, there are powered rescue craft or lifeboats that can tow life rafts to a safe place. Great care is needed when towing life rafts. Once the life rafts are clear of the ship, it's important that they're secured together. Evacuees stand a better chance of survival if they stay close. Anti-seasickness pills must be taken at the outset. Sea anchors should be streamed. And then the priorities are protecting against exposure, helping the rescue services to find you, and managing life on board while you wait for help to arrive. All life rafts carry basic supplies that include a simple first aid kit, thermal protection aids, TPAs, some water, anti-seasickness pills, and repair kits. As we said at the start of this program, the need to abandon ship occurs very rarely. But knowing how to do it quickly and safely could save lives, including your own. In reality, the chances are that it will happen in bad weather.
and maybe at night. Launch instructions must be posted and easily visible, especially under emergency lighting. You need to make sure that doing the right thing is automatic. Take full advantage of all training and drills. Refer to your muster list and the ship's SOLAS training manual to be sure that you know your ship's emergency procedures and equipment.